Hi everyone, and we are now on to our 14th lesson in this series of videos on Jekyll and Hyde. Um, today we're going to concentrate on um, fog in the text, its symbolism, analysis and some quotes. So let's get started and if you've got any questions, um, comment on the YouTube channel or um, email me or comment on Teams or however you want to do it. But if you've got any questions at all, it's really important that you ask. So let's start with fog and growing suspicions. So have you ever felt that fog was a bad omen? A careful reading of the text reveals that fog is heavily linked with the nebulous relationships between Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Utterson and the evil Mr. Hyde. Nebulous means vague, by the way. Fogg first appears in the, in the novella at the beginning of Utterson's investigation of Hyde. We encounter this quintessentially London weather as Mr Utterson began to haunt Hyde's door in the morning before office hours, at noon when business was plenty and time scarce, at night under the face of the fogged city moon. In this instance, fog isn't a particularly dominant feature, yet the fog can be understood as representing Utterson's suspicion though not much more. However, it becomes more prevalent as evidence begins to stack up against Hyde. Another word for quintessential, by the way, is typically. So as always, I'll just give you a few seconds just to pause the video if you need to. And as you can see, I have put the quote in blue. Um just so that you can see what's a quote from the book and what's not. Okay, let's move on to the struggle between good and evil. So, after identifying Caro's body and recognising the murder weapon as Jekyll's stolen walking stick, Utterson brings a police officer to Hyde's house to search for more evidence. They take a cab through the first fog of the season, which Stevenson describes as a great chocolate-coloured pal lowered over heaven, with the wind continually char charging and rooting these embattled vapours. It's quite a dramatic scene that mirrors what's going on behind the scenes. Because we know that Jekyll, sh Jekyll struggles against the temptation to change into Hyde and eventually loses his ability to control the transformation, we can also think about Fogg as his internal battle against evil. From this perspective, the Fogg symbolises Hyde and Jekyll is the wind and sunlight fighting against it. During the ride, Utterson beheld a marvellous number of degrees and hues of twilight. For here it would be dark like the end, like the back end of evening, and there would be a glow of rich lurid brown like the light of some strange conflagration. And here for a moment the fog would be quite broken up, and a haggard shaft of daylight would glance in between the swirling wreaths. It's so dark that the street lamps are on, even though it's 9am. And for Utterson, the London district of Soho is like a district of some city in a nightmare. Although Utterson doesn't know it yet, Jekyll has indeed been living a nightmare. As we find out from his personal writings at the end of the novella, his struggle to defeat Hyde has made his life miserable and caused him to realise that the only way out is suicide. Let's move on to fog as confusion and blindness now. When they arrive at Hyde's house, the fog continues to shift and it literally alters Utterson's ability to see clearly. At first, the fog lifted a little and showed him a dingy street, but the next moment the fog settled down again upon that part, as brown as umber and cut him off from his black guardly surroundings. A black guard is an archaic British term for a rude or untrustworthy person. Here, Utterson is about to make the important discovery that Hyde is a murderer, but he's soon baffled by Jekyll's decline in health as well. While Jekyll endures his secret internal battle, Utterson struggles to understand what is happening to him. Each new clue seems to be accompanied by another enigma, so we can also 
read fog as a symbol of Utterson's confusion and blindness with regard to his friend's true nature. So this is our analysis part. Fantastic. Let's move on to fog as the downfall of Jekyll. After finding the other half of the walking stick at Hyde's house, Utterson visits Jekyll to make sure that the doctor is neither trying to protect him nor about to become his next victim. Jekyll brings Utterson into his laboratory and Utterson notes the lights falling dimly through the foggy copula. A cupula is a small vented vault on a roof that provides light and ventilation to a building's interior. As the two men enter Jekyll's cabinet, a private office in the laboratory, Utterson finds that Jekyll has a fire going in the fireplace and has lit a lamp because even in the houses the fog began to lie thickly. He also observes that Dr Jekyll looks deathly sick and has a cold hand and a changed voice, as well as a feverish manner. At this point, Jekyll is losing the battle with Hyde and will soon commit suicide. Thus, we can read the fog in his cupola, cupola and in his house as a sign of Jekyll's impending doom. Later, after Utterson returns home to a bright fire in his own fireplace, the narrator tells us that the fog still slept on the wing above the drowned city, where the lamps glimmered like carbuncles, and through the muffle and smother of these falling clouds, the procession of the town's life was still rolling in, like a mighty wind. In short, London life continues as normal, as normal despite Jekyll's torment, and so does Utterson's investigation. So from this lesson, I hope you can now see um, the importance of fog in the text. It creates mystery, ambiguity, blindness, um, unclarity. Uh, it's really, really important. And it actually acts as that metaphor for that um, ambiguity within, within someone as well. Okay, well, year nine, thank you so much for listening um, and I'll speak to you again tomorrow.